How are we, everybody? And you're welcome along to tonight's 10-minute Anfield Agenda Transfer Roundup. As always, would love to know your thoughts on whatever it is I talk about tonight. Do let me know in the comment section. Drop a like on the video. And, of course, hit that subscribe button. You're probably wondering what this big, mahoosive QR code is on the screen. That is there if you want a shortcut to the Anfield Agenda Twitch channel, which is where all of our live content will be ahead of the season. If you scan that QR code, that'll bring you straight over to our Twitch channel. Uh, look at us flexing our uh, flexing i should say our technical know-how and by us i mean absolutely connor because i don't know any of this stuff anyway enough waffle craig start the clock 10 minutes here we go right where to start let's start with calvin ramsey calvin ramsey was officially unveiled today at the football club and he will take the number 22 shirt if that number sounds familiar it was the shirt that simon mignolet uh, previously wore so welcome to the football club calvin ramsey and i look forward to uh to seeing how he progresses this season i'm sure most of you guys like myself have been watching any youtube clips and highlights you can and he's, uh, he's had a good breakthrough career, a breakthrough season, I should say, at Aberdeen. So looking forward to uh, seeing what Mr. Ramsey can bring to the Liverpool squad. Uh, other transfer talk today. Well, look, I want to move on to talk about the midfielder because that's the one that has us all scratching our head. And I've told you guys many times what I believe, but let's speak about the brief that Jurgen Klopp has apparently given to Julian Ward. So according to the Mirror... Uh, Jurgen Klopp has instructed Julian Ward that he wants a new midfielder next summer and that that midfielder should be uh, young, multifunctional, have good technique uh, and athleticism. Does that sound like anybody to you guys? I don't know. Mm. Can't really think of anybody. Na, 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 na. Anyway, that's, you know, over to you. What do you think? Uh, but uh, no, look, what I really want to know is, all joking aside, can we get through a season? Can we get through another season if we don't address the midfield situation? Because we clearly wanted one in this window if we went for sure many. And I wonder, is it because of fiscal reasons that we're not going to sign one in this window? Having spent the money that we did on bringing in Darwin Nunes, that could reach a club record £86 million. But we also have to take into account, and it isn't sexy, it isn't nice to talk about this because it's already happened and we like to look to the future and get excited, but... We were going to sign Luis Diaz in this window and that money was brought forward for the January window, obviously because of Spurs' interest. Don't know what interest is. Interest in uh, signing him. So we got him in. So for balance, we should probably look at it as this window's money being Diaz, Darwin Nunes, um, Calvin Ramsey, and of course Fabio Carvalho, who has yet to be officially unveiled. And I think... That's the reason he hasn't been unveiled, apart from the fact, obviously, that contracts usually kick in on the 1st of July, is more around the number situation. I wonder if the club are waiting for Sadio Mane to officially make his move to uh, Bayern Munich official, shockingly enough, officially official, and that maybe Carvalho is going to get the number 10 shirt. Now, I realise that this is a leap and a bit of a stretch, but... I think the kid's going to be good enough to justify a number 10 shirt. So that's my guess at this situation. And it is just that. It is a guess. And um, there was also some more talk around the never-ending Mohamed Salah transfer or wages saga. Um, strangely, the mirror seems to be very negative on all things Liverpool lately. And by that, I don't mean they're having a dig at the club. But a lot of their stories have had a negative connotation or spin to them. And the Mirror believe that Liverpool feel that they've reached an impasse about the Mohamed Salah contract situation because we can't make the numbers better. We can't push the numbers any further without smashing the wage structure, which apparently we aren't willing to do. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us in a rather unattractive position, in my opinion, because, and I don't give a damn who it is. I don't care what player you want to insert in here. I don't believe that any human being can give 100% if they believe their future is elsewhere. They can talk a good game. They can maybe believe that they're giving 100%. But ultimately, I feel deep down in those 50-50 tackles or when you feel that twinge and you know that your future doesn't lie with this football club, I would say most people would probably, probably not give their all, even if it is subconsciously and again this isn't me digging having a dig at mo it could be the same value player think back to other players who've left us on a free recently emre chan he was as professional as he could be but still wasn't a great last season genie wanyaldum last season um i thought again 
as professional as he could be. But if you look at our fan base and you look at the comments around when the Alden's last season, many people believe he stunk the place up. And again, I think it's because it's just hard, isn't it? It's hard. If you know that you've got a big job with potentially a huge salary bump and signing on fee elsewhere, are you really going to play through the pain barrier? Are you really going to run through a brick wall for your manager? Are you really going to go in for that 50-50 tackle? Are you really going to put your body on the line? Come on, be honest here. The answer's probably no. And that's okay. It's human nature. So, getting back to my original point, if this is the case, and if we are very unlikely, and I use the word unlikely because anything's possible, if we are unlikely to agree a deal with Mo, surely in this window, we've got to look at bringing in a replacement. I know you could say, well, we can leave it till next summer, but I think the risk is a little bit greater if we leave it till next summer because we bring somebody in now, uh, just throw some names around. You could look at Saka from Arsenal. You could look at uh, Federico Chiesa, who would be my absolute choice. You could look at Jared Bone, again, somebody I'd be very happy with. Chiesa's a risk because he's coming back from an ACL, so that would be a roll of the dice. Uh, but I would say Bowen or Saka or any of these players with Premier League experience or that are English will probably cost £60 million, regardless if it's this summer or next summer. And I think we could probably do with having that person in now because if Mo's numbers drop off, at least we have somebody there who can come in and do a job. Whereas if we don't and Mohamed Salah's numbers drop off this season or his form continues on with his end of season form, which wasn't great, then we're kind of screwed. We're in a little bit of trouble and we're scrambling around trying to make jigsaw pieces fit that don't really fit. Diogo Jota is one of our forward options, but you wouldn't necessarily think of him doing a great job out on the right. Carvalho was coming in. Again, you would think most likely Fabio Carvalho's best position will be centrally, probably just behind the striker. Or Bobby Firmino, again, not somebody you'd naturally think of on the right-hand side. Who you would think of on the right-hand side is probably the likes of Cade Gordon. Who isn't ready yet? And nor should he be ready yet or that pressure put on him. So I guess what I want to know is, how do you feel about the Mohamed Salah situation? Do you agree with what I've said? Do you think I'm talking absolute nonsense? Or are you confident that he will somehow have a change of heart? I mean, look, ideal scenario is this. Mo shows up for pre-season training, sees Darwin Nunes, floats a few crosses into him, likes the link-up play, likes how it's all gelling, looks over, sees Diaz and thinks, hmm, sun's shining, Liverpool's a lovely city, fans love me, settled here at the club, okay, I might have to take a little hit in finances compared to what I could get elsewhere, but ultimately, I want to stay here because I could go down as one of the greatest to ever do it at Liverpool Football Club, which is quite a big mantle to have up there and he could be up there with Steven Gerrard with Kenny Dalglish as the absolute greats that's why I think I'm hoping that he has a change of heart or that a compromise can be reached but do I think it's likely no not if I put my business head on my more cynical head I think you know these are these are huge sums of money and as much as we like to think players love the club as much as we do, they have their own brands, their own careers to uh, to look after and we know that he can probably earn a lot more money elsewhere. So, yeah, I just don't think that it's... And somebody who understands finances a bit better than me can maybe help me out in the comment section here. But how have we put ourselves in a position where we're going to lose the three stalwarts of our attack over the last five years, Bobby Firmino, Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane, for a combined fee of £35 million, pound, including the add-ons that we'll get from Bayern Munich. That doesn't feel right, does it? Whether the club planned it, this out or not, I struggle to see how this makes any sense to lose those three guys. Two of them on a free at the end of the season. Um, and then, of course, the last thing I want to talk about today is Alex Oakley chamberlain once again, because there's been reports that Klopp may have changed his mind and that he wants to keep Alex Oakley chamberlain at the club for this upcoming season. Again, I don't think that's a good idea. And let me tell you why. Everything I said about Mohamed Salah, same again here for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. But with one exception, we have players at the club who can get those minutes and midfielders. Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. I would far prefer to see those guys get any extra available minutes rather than somebody like Oxlade-Chamberlain who has no long-term future at the club, will leave for free at the end of the season. I'd much rather give that experience to the talented, youthful players that we have. Carvalho, Elliot, Curtis Jones, Tyler Morton, 
I think it will just benefit us in the longer term, even if they don't perform to maybe how Chamberlain would do in the few games he gets. So for me, if there's 10 or 12 million quid on offer, uh, I'd certainly like the club to take it for Alex Oxley chamberlain Everything else has gone relatively quiet. Um, nothing really new on Creevian Kelleher. Um, nothing on Takumi Minamino. No new bids that I'm aware of. That's pretty much where we are. Um, this could be the end of our window with regards to players coming in. So rate this window for me. What would you give it out of 10? For me, it's a 6 now. If Salah signs, it's an 8. If Salah doesn't sign, I'm worried. But as always, we've got Klopp, so hopefully it'll be grand. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.